Yo, 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 my people. As you can see, today we are talking about fairies in The Sims. If you're anything like me, you wanted fairies when we were getting The Sims 4 Cottage Living, but we didn't get them. If you're anything like me, maybe you went and bought Sims 3 Supernatural so that you could play with fairies, but maybe not. So let me tell you a little bit about kind of the history of fairies in The Sims. So according to The Sims Wiki, there used to be a fairy queen Mara in The Sims Make and Magic, so the original Sims game. And then in The Sims 2, there was the Summer Dream family. These Sims or fairies, you could call them, were really only fairies in so much as their physical traits because they had pointy ears and then Mara had wings apparently, but really it wasn't a life state of the game. It was just aesthetics. And the first time we see an actual life state of a fairy in The Sims is The Sims which is what most of this video is gonna be talking about. For me, I feel like The Sims 3 should be like the very bare minimum that we should expect for fairies in The Sims 4, assuming that we'll get them one day. This is just editing me saying that I say this because for the pawn tools, for example, pawns in Sims 3 were very simple, but we had them. And when we finally got the pawn tool in Sims 4, it was like way better. So I expect fairies to be even better than Sims 3 fairies in Sims 4. So that's why I really feel like this should be talked about and we should know what we should expect. In The Sims 3, there were three ways to make Sims. Of course, create a Sim is the main way. And so see here, I have one of my fairy Sims. I don't know why her picture isn't showing here, but this is Ruby Air. She's an identical twin fairy. So here you have the supernatural type, and of course she's fairy. And pretty much with fairies, when it comes to create a Sim, is you get to choose their wing types. And she has the super swirly. There's six of them. There's also Willowed Wisps, Dreamy Dragonfly, Majestic Monarch, you know what? I should be showing you these. Okay, so here is Willowed Wisps. Wispy and beautiful. Dreamy Dragonfly. It does look like a dragonfly. <laughs> and there's the Majestic Monarch. Ooh, yes. Very butterfly-esque. And then she had the Super Swirly right there. And there's Fanciful Ferns. Oh, those are really cute too. And then Busy Bumblebee. Oh my gosh, they're so tiny and cute. So you can like change the color of them. So there's this, but then also because it's Sims 3, there's a color wheel so you can totally totally customize your wing color however you want it to be. There are two specific lifetime wishes in The Sims 3 that pertain to fairies. And the first is Magic Makeover, which is where you grant 12 different Sims inner beauty. So that's something about the fairies that we'll probably get into later is that, you know, they have magic essentially, and they also are very good when it comes to the charisma skill. So the other part of the wish is to reach level 10 in the charisma skill. And then there's also the Greener Gardens lifetime wish. So lifetime wishes are pretty much aspirations in The Sims 4. And the reason that Greener Gardens is one of fairies is because they are awesome with gardening as well. And her wish is the magic makeover one. Her twin sisters is the Greener Gardens. The other ways to become a fairy in The Sims 3 are essentially you can receive a become a fairy opportunity. So like there'll be a pop-up and then it'll be like, hey, do you want to do this specific thing? And you'll become a fairy. It might not say that exactly, but that's the idea. <laughs> and then the other way is through drinking an elixir, which is called the Bottled Blessing of the Fae. Let's talk about fairy abilities now. Something I didn't actually even know, even though I've been playing with fairies for a little bit now, is that their lifespan is like five times longer than a normal sim. So see, they're both young adults and she has 103 days until she ages up to an adult. That's insane. <laughs> and of course, because of their wings, they can fly. So they move faster than a normal sim too. Like I mentioned before, gardening and charisma are kind of special to fairies. They are amazing with gardening. This is my fairy's garden at the moment. And she's already level four, almost level five. And I mean, this hasn't been that long. She's been working at this. Charisma also, they just have that charm, you know? With that trait, they actually increase it faster than a normal sim would. And you might have noticed this little fairy bungalow over here. That's so cute. With that, fairies can pretty much take care of themselves in almost every single single way. I'm just gonna have her enter a fairy house and you'll see her go into her like true form. Watch her transform into her true fairy form. Ah! Oh! little tiny fairy there she goes and they also transform into that form with certain other interactions like you can have them fairy frolic for instance if i clicked on this right now they would both turn into their fairy form and like kind of play around with each other it's the cutest thing in sims 3 supernatural moonlight does not just affect werewolves it also affects i think all the supernatural life states but it does affect fairies too see right here she has the moonlit energized by moonlight and that's there on all nights except for a new moon 
where they become starved for moonlight. And then of course, another fairy ability is magic, like I mentioned before. And the more fairies use magic, the more abilities they gain. A little bit more about fairy magic is that there are fairy powers, there's fairy tricks, and there are fairy traps. One example of a fairy power is the I can fly one, so right here. And then look at her fly and that just increases their fun. That's a level zero power. But then there's also level one, three, and four ones as they level up in their fairy skills. Miss Jade over here, she is a skilled enough fairy in magic that she can set a fairy trap in the shower. And I think that one is like hair dye or something. So the next time her sister were to go in there, she would probably get an intentional hair dye. <laughs> right here it says the trap is set. Now all that's needed is an unsuspecting sim to stumble upon it. I really want to see this actually let's shower let's have our sister shower and see what happens and it's funny that fairies can do these things to each other too oh no she's gonna go shower girl i told your sister to go get out of the way you just set a trap don't you know here she goes totally unsuspecting Ooh, those tricky fairies. They sure pulled a fast one on Ruby Air. Oh my gosh, look at it. Her hair is so blue. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love it. And then, of course, there's fairy tricks. I'm gonna have Jade again <laughs> play a fairy trick on her sister. And it's gonna be chattering teeth. She just pulls a little magic, makes it cold, and then <laughs> her teeth start to chatter. <laughs> and they love it. So it's just cute, fun things like that. And then there's also auras that fairies can give off. So, Ruby here. She's a pretty skilled fairy. She has all of them. So there's aura of soothing, aura of body and mind, and aura of creativity. And this affects the fairies and those around them. So if I get her to give off the aura of soothing, I think that's going to affect Ruby as well. Well, I think I said Ruby. I meant Jade. Jade is the skilled one. She has all the fairy abilities, essentially. And see, so now Ruby is feeling calm. And apparently, if you have seasons installed with Supernatural as well, then fairies can cast a reviving spring with the weather stone which is placed on like a random lot in the world and what that'll do is it'll make it rain flowers which then revives all the gardens all the plants in the whole world so it'll like water them fertilize them weed them and lastly there's gonna be a beautiful rainbow that you can see over the entire world I haven't done this yet but it sounds so cool and of course there's interactions that fairies can do amongst each other or with other sims so right now Ruby is playfully pestering <laughs> Miss Daydream Ivy over here. And I don't think Ruby is quite skilled enough, but you can also give fairy dust to other sims and that can like make them float a little bit too. And then let's head back into Create a Sim to talk about the different age stages of fairies. So apparently baby fairies, they don't have wings, but they have a sparkle that surrounds them and that will tell you the color that their wings will be. Let's make Ruby a little toddler. So as you can see, oh my gosh, look at her. Toddlers have wings, but they don't really have fairy abilities, except maybe not having feet. <laughs> but they do have the fairy hover and they can go into like the fairy house, the fairy bungalow, and take care of most of their needs that way too. And then child fairies, they can perform four fairy tricks. I don't know which ones they are, but that's what the wiki tells me. <laughs> and then as a teenager, fairies can pretty much do everything an adult fairy can. And that really is dependent on their fairy magic skill level. So that can start being developed from a child on. And that right there is almost everything there is to know about fairies in The Sims up to this point. <laughs> I've been having so much fun playing with them in The Sims 3 and I really hope that they come to The Sims 4 sooner than later. Let me know down below in the comments if you want to see fairies in The Sims 4 soon too. And also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!